God is good. God is good again. And all the time. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that your word will be simplified for all of us to understand and that we will be empowered to do that which you want us to do and that our lives will be for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. The message I want to share with you this afternoon, this Sabbath of thinking about those who are single amongst us, the single Sabbath, our message is titled, To Be Single, You Must Be Gifted. To be single, you must be what? Gifted. gifted. To be single, you must be gifted. Without that gift, you can't survive. To be single, you must be gifted. I want to invite you to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 10, 11, and 12. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 10, 11 and 12. Jesus has just talked about divorce. And the explanation that Jesus has given has made divorce seem very difficult. And those who are running to marriage so that they can easily divorce and marry again, told Jesus that what you have said is difficult. We live at a time when many people want a kind of marriage that is easy to exit. There is no problem if you can easily exit any marriage. The only problem is, number one, you leave somebody hurt and abused. Number two, you leave children stranded. Number three, you go back on the vows you made before God. And so, when you just make it easy to exit marriage, you stand a risk of causing a problem with these three things. There is a risk of somebody being abused because of your adventures in and out of outside marriage. You leave children exposed because of your inability to persevere. And so Jesus told the people that the will of God was that once people come together, nobody should put them asunder. Matthew chapter 19 verse 10, the Bible says, the disciples said to Jesus, if this is the situation between a husband and wife, if it is difficult to part, then it is better not to marry. And I want to suggest that unless you are mature and adult enough, don't stray into marriage. When the disciples had Jesus explain the will of God for marriage, they said that comparing marriage and being single, they said it is better if we remain what? Single. Than to go into marriage, offend God, leave children hurting, and leave a spouse hurting, because of your adventures. And Jesus replied in verse 11 by saying, not everyone can accept this word. What is Jesus responding to? They have told Jesus, it is better to be single. Why? Because according to them, being single is easier than being married. And Jesus is telling them, no, even being single is not easy. Jesus is telling them, not everyone can accept this word. 
word, but only those to whom it has been given. Verse 12. And Jesus goes on to explain different types of single people. He says, for there are eunuchs who were born that way. And there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. And there are those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And he said, the one who can accept this should accept it. Why are you single? I want to address single people. Why are you single? Why is someone single? If you are so concerned about somebody who is single, why are they single? Jesus said that some are gifted by God to be single. God made them that way. While it is worrying you, it is not worrying them. While it gives you sleepless nights, they are having a time of their life. You need to know why someone is single. Some have been traumatized into singlehood by people. If they remember the way they were treated, they are safe being single. That's why Jesus said, some have been made eunuchs by men. And you know it's possible you are seated here in church, feeling all is well, but there is somebody you made a eunuch. Through your adventures at the college, or back in the village after promising them heaven when you come to Nairobi. Then you went back from Nairobi, you went back to the village, they were expecting, but you arrived with another spouse. And up to today, they have not recovered. While it is easy to think that, uh, why can't somebody marry? There are people who have been traumatized into the situation. And while we are busy pushing them, maybe we see someone here in New Life Church. And we are wondering, why don't you marry? Why don't you get married? You don't know their story, where they came from. There could be somebody or some people who have traumatized them that they are better left alone than have a nightmare of living with somebody else again. Some are single for the sake of God's work. It is a sacrifice they have made. There is a reason why someone would be single, yet God designed marriage as a general path to be followed. What point am I making? When someone is single, there is a reason. There is a reason. Identify the reasons why you are single. If you are single out of personal choice, be comfortable in your skin and enjoy life. You need to know that if you are traumatized into singlehood, trauma can be addressed medically and through psychological counseling. Seek help. You can be helped. You have not said anything, but I'm saying you can be helped. I'm repeating the third time you can be helped. I'm telling you, you are helpable. Are we together? You can be helped. It is possible that you still tremble at the thought of marriage because you are traumatized into singlehood. Seek help and perhaps you may recover and get a chance to live a normal life. You understand what we are saying? Because if you are not designed for singlehood, then singlehood is an abnormality for you. If it is a gift of God, be sure that it is and enjoy life. That's why I came to tell you to be single, you must be gifted. If it is a gift from God, you will enjoy. No amount of pressure from society will change anything. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6 to 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6 to 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6 to 9. The Bible says, I say this as a concession 
and not as a command. Apostle Paul is saying, I'm not commanding, I'm not ordering, I'm not forcing. Verse 7, I wish that all of you were as I am, single man, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another one has that gift. Now to the unmarried, verse 8, and widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. Verse 9, but if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Listen, friends, to be single or married cannot be forced on anyone. To be single or married cannot be forced on anyone. To be single or married cannot be forced on anyone. I'm saying to be single or married cannot be forced. Apostle Paul begins by saying that I say this not as a command. Listen, friends, listen to this. We must treat it as absolute disrespect of personal space to make anyone uncomfortable because of their marital status. English can be difficult. I understand. English can be difficult, particularly if every time you get an opportunity, you are just speaking mother tongue. So when you are listening, you translate first to mother tongue, Swahili, then put it together, then now you digest it. So let me repeat for the sake of that kind of people. Are we together? Who are taking time to process it in mother tongue? We must treat it as absolute disrespect of personal space to make anyone uncomfortable because of their marital status. Let me repeat, for the sake of those who must translate it from several languages before they get home to the language they are used to. We must treat it as absolute disrespect of personal space to make anyone uncomfortable because of their marital status. Do you know there are certain jokes we make around because of single people that may drive them out of church? Hey, did you hear what I said? That every time we are pointing at their singleness until it becomes something that stands out, that when they appear, what is visible is that they are single. We may drive people out of church for good because of that. We must make people comfortable with whatever status they find themselves in. Because you never know why somebody is single. The person may be young, but they actually lost a spouse. And so when you keep reminding them, do you want them to start mourning before you, before you get embarrassed? I think we must make it normal to respect the personal space of somebody else. It is civilized, it is right. I know there are many single people around us who we are used to and we keep reminding every day, Utaowalini, when will you marry? When will you marry? But I think it is time we up our maturity from that level. Let us mature up. We are asking those who think they are mature to now act mature and respect the space of those individuals. I'm not about to bypass that point quickly. So I will say again what I've already said. I know I'm repeating, but there's no problem. I'm repeating so that there's no doubt that I said it. Are we together, friends? Just the fact that you are lucky to be married does not mean that you have made a big achievement in life. Respect the space of those who are single. Allow them to be Christians. Allow them to be believers. Allow them to enjoy fellowship without being reminded that they have not found someone to live with. 
Because you know very well, if your life was put properly in the limelight, nobody will even want to live your married life. So there is really nothing you are pushing people to. Because even your own married life is not worth the salt you are pushing anyone for. Are you looking for fellow sufferers? I'm just wondering, are you looking for fellow sufferers? Maintain your distance. Are we together, friends? Maintain what? Maintain your distance, professional distance. We cannot make people uncomfortable in church just because the only achievement you made is marry. Nadawari haujamaliza. We know. A whole of you, you have not finished dowry. And here you are putting pressure on people. Naoa lini, unaoa lini, unaoa lini. Wenda lipa mahari. Are we together? Go pay dowry first. Brothers and sisters, let's respect each other. Are we together? Even single people belong to the church. Married people followed Jesus without asking his marital status. And it should be possible for single people to conduct church business 100% without anyone ever asking whether they are married or not. Do you want to marry me? You are asking whether I'm married. Do you want to marry me? If no, then shut up. Are we together? Yeah. If a single person is asking a single person whether they are married, that's business. Are we together? That's business. But you are married and you are going around saying, when will you marry? When will you marry? Are you polygamous? <laughs> no, I'm just asking, are you polygamous? Maintain your what? May I maintain your what? Maintain your distance. I'm reading for the upteenth time. We must treat it as absolute disrespect of personal space to make anyone uncomfortable because of their marital status. Sometimes what you think is a light note is not a light note because it sinks. That you waited when everybody was seated, then you reminded me that I'm single. Then you reminded me that there are so many men, there are so many women. It's not right. Listen, friends, to be single, you must be gifted. To be single is a gift. If you have the gift or lack it, be humble. A gift is a God-given power to live life for God's glory. And that's why we are saying to be single, you must be what? You must be gifted. Listen, friends, to resist the urge to imitate others, you must be gifted. That urge to be like others, you have to be gifted to resist that urge. Particularly when you think that everybody your age is now getting married. Oh, wedding here, wedding there, wedding there. To resist the urge to be like others, to imitate others when you are not ready, you need a gift from God. I'm saying you need a gift from God. Even if you are silent, you still need a gift from, from God. Even in your silence, you need a gift from God. To be single, you must be, you must be gifted. To survive reminders that you need a partner, you must be gifted. Can you imagine that every day you are being reminded to get a partner, you need to be gifted. Otherwise, your world can easily collapse. Every day they are remind us, remind us, remind us. Every day. To survive rumors that arise when you are seen with a member of the opposite gender, you must be gifted. Single people. You are just living your life quietly and one church member sees you with a person of opposite gen gender, at Urban Eats, you are just having a small meeting, a chit chat in open space. And the next thing, somebody asks you two weeks later whether you are seeing anyone. <laughs> Let me tell you, you need to be gifted. Otherwise, you can't survive. 
because it's like there is everyone who is watching you, just watching, waiting for a move you make. To be single, you must be what? You must be gifted. To survive the careful approach that pastors and elders give in visiting you and dealing with you, you must be gifted. Because you see, how can a pastor just come to a single lady's home? So the pastor has to think a lot. If he was going to a married person's home, that's a very easy thing, isn't it? He says, I'm going to visit so and so, and he comes straight. But a single person, the pastor has to plan, counter plan, organize, alert elders, and all possible rumor us to know. So that by the time they come, the, the, the rumors are well handled. Are we together? Yeah. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, brothers and sisters. And that's why I'm praying that may you be gifted enough to be single. Are we together? So that when you hear such things, you are okay. You say, elders, I ask you to visit me, but I know you need a month to, to just lay the plans to visit me. When you are through, please come. Hallelujah. Yeah. We also need prayers in our house. Hallelujah. Yeah. Not everyone coming to our house is coming to sleep with us. Are we together, friends? Yeah, they just come for prayer. To be single, you must be what? You must be gifted. To survive the difficulty the nominating committee goes through in assigning you church duty, you must, you must, you must actually be gifted. That when your name comes, <laughs> the chairperson is not sure how to put it, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they begin by saying, that's a good name. <laughs> yeah, that's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because there is nothing except your singleness that is about to be brought up. Yeah. <laughs> You know, as a church, uh, you know, they're trying to look for a page in the manual that addresses your issue. It's not there. Yeah. Well, maybe not as a church, but uh, as uh, my friend. And when eventually you get to learn about this, it takes a gifted person to be single. Hallelujah. <laughs> to be single, you must be what? You must be gifted. To survive holidays, when families are together and when couples are together February 14, you must be gifted. You know, it's holiday and now all pictures are on social media. Husband, wife, children. Husband, wife, children. Even husbands who never show up, show up eventually. Are we together? And you are a single person. One day looks like 25 years. It's long to be single. You must be what? You must be gifted. How do you survive, survive fe February 14? Because by February 10, the town is turning red quietly. And for you, it's gray. Are we together? And life is going on. Let me tell you, friends, if there are people who deserve respect and honor, are single people who can survive February 14. And they look at it straight in the eye. And life goes on. Hallelujah. Amen. We are saying to be single, you must be what? You must be gifted. December comes and you go home alone. The, everyone else among your relatives is bringing small children, spouse and what have you. You arrive self-contained. You are here. <laughs> and the only reason they show you respect is you have some money. Are we together? Otherwise, if you had no money, utapasua kuni na kubeba maji. Are we together? <laughs> to remain emotionally balanced when pressure from relatives is unrelenting, you must be gifted. Sometimes relatives put, put pressure, pressure. Pressure. They even start suggesting people. You find people greeting you. Your aunt gave me your number. Hi. <laughs> and you look at the person and you look at yourself and you, you start crying. Surely me, this one, for heaven's sake. A good spouse comes from God. Is my aunt God?
to serve God without being distracted by your marital status, you must be gifted. I will repeat one more time. To serve God without being distracted by your marital status, you must be gifted. Because we are saying to be single, you must be what? You must be gifted. My friends, when you see single people going around, those are gifted people. Gifted. It's only that you don't know the gift. You only know pastoral gift and singing gift. But there is a gift of being single. To resist sexual temptation, you must be gifted. It's a gift. To resist accepting the wrong person who approaches you since the right people no longer show up, you must be gifted. That you realize you are actually growing old, but all those who are coming are wrong. It takes a gifted person to say, if this is the only option, I'm okay being single. It takes a gifted person. And all I came to tell you, friends, is to be single, you must be what? Gifted. I can't hear you. To be single, you must be what? Gifted. You must be gifted. Listen, friends. Gifts come from God and God alone. I want you to ask for this gift from God. Even when you are waiting for a life partner, if you have decided to wait, you need this gift. And I want to assure you that God will grant you the gift. Amen? Amen. God will grant you the gift. Amen? Amen? Whether you are planning to marry, get married, or to remain single, you need the gift of being single. That gift will sustain you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many need the gift? Our dear Heavenly Father, look at these hands. Gift your sons and daughters so that they can survive the pressures of this world. So that they can survive the negative energy and that in spite of their circumstances, they will still live a totally fulfilled life and a life that will bring glory to your name. I want to pray for single people, dear Heavenly Father, that you understand them, bless them, favor them. May they find peace that passes understanding. May they find joy. May they find happiness. May they be totally fulfilled. And dear Heavenly Father, may you reveal your will to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much, everybody. I've been well treated here. I say thank you to the leaders. Thank you. I love you all. God bless.